In this video, we will explore a world where the sea levels have risen to unfathomable heights, where the only land the eye can see is the tops of old massive mountains and floating archipelagos. With only one life, what will 100 players do given this desolate water wasteland? Well, that's what we'll find out in today's video. Welcome to 100 Players Try to Simulate Civilization in a Water Wasteland. In the beginning, the great Minecraft Ark that held all the players unfortunately sunk deep into the bottom of the ocean during a horrific storm. As such, the survivors of the shipwreck quickly scattered to either the top of the ocean or deeper into the shipwreck to find valuable materials and items that could potentially help in this water wasteland. Looking at the ship itself, the players were able to find a rich abundance of resources such as food, building supplies, water breathing potions, and other valuable and essential resources and materials. However, for the more bold and adventurous individuals who made a dash for the surface would quickly set sail to find many of the islands dotted about. While there were a ton of unique islands with their own special little thing, there were four main ones, which were a towering archipelago, the volcano island, the floating oasis, and Paradise Island. Naturally, many of the early explorers would discover a bunch of these islands where they quickly discovered special structures and items such as a small tomb located on the floating oasis that held a notch apple. Despite the race to gather as much resources as possible, many would decide to work together, which would naturally result in many groups trying to establish some form of civilization. As such, here were some of the notable upcoming civilizations. First was the Trade Federation, led by the elected anime. The civilization's focus was to try to have a monopoly on special trade goods, such as sugarcane, which was in low supply in this water wasteland. There was also the Ocean Cartel, led by Stealth, whose goal was to simply create a monopoly on special substances, such as vodka. Additionally, there was the Mushroom Commune, who didn't really have any type of government, leader, or any goal for that matter. Quite simply, they were just a bunch of players just trying to make their way in this water wasteland. Last but not least was the Flock. Despite being called that, their home would oddly be found in a deep cave, far away from any island. The Flock elected their leader to be a person named Duck, who focused on being more like a doomsday cult as their goal was to simply survive and outlast those on the surface, Fallout style. However, by the nature of this world, many smaller groups would also be present, such as these two traders, Dixie and Luna, who simply were your friendly local merchants traveling from island to island. At this stage of the world, many players would simply trade with one another in an effort to gain the very needed materials to survive and thrive. However, when civilizations start to appear on the high seas, something else naturally starts to appear soon after. That's right, pirates. As the respective civilizations were getting a foothold in this world, quite a few individuals saw their opportunity to garner as much wealth and glory as possible on the high seas. For example, there was a pirate group called the Cabal, which consisted of Geet and Homer. These two originally took shelter with the Ocean Cartel, but seeing the opportunity for riches, glory, and a good dose of chaos, would travel out to the Volcano Island, where they discovered a lonely cult priest. And if you know anything about history, pirates and religious figures typically don't blend well together. Oh man. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Stop. We did it! Let's go, Homer! <laughs> Gotta go! However, pirates aren't always born from greed, but are sometimes created through hardships, especially in a world as unforgiving and desolate as this one. Victims of this reality were prizable and happy, who were lost souls out at sea who struggled to find food, resources, and even a place to call home. The duo felt hated and abandoned by the world, and this feeling would only grow when they came across the Mushroom Commune, who, despite being originally built upon the idea of companionship, developed into a more inward society, only caring for those within their walls. However, what made it worse was what they did next. The Mushroom Commune decided to attack. The true reason for this was unfortunately lost to history, 
but the motive did not matter as the damage was already done. Fortunately for the duo, they were able to just barely escape. If they could not be embraced by the Mushroom Commune, they shall burn it down to feel its warmth. The duo, now hell-bent on the destruction of the Mushroom Commune, would stop at nothing to reap their resources and get their revenge. Despite the 2 to 13 odds, the now pirate duo would dedicate their existence to making sure that this day would be the last day the Mushroom Commune would exist. After the Mushroom Commune's initial attack, the pirate duo came back. Despite only having iron armor and weapons, their ability to work together and desire for revenge would be enough to stand against the Mushroom Commune. The Mushroom Commune, not thinking much of this new pirate threat, they are very undergeared. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I almost just got off my boat and axe crew. I them. know, they could have totally taken- <laughs> I could have probably taken the two of them. Would dispatch a small military force led by Night Knight to deal with them. At first, the pirates duo would harass them, goading them onto the Oasis Island, where things truly began to kick off. Don't go for uh, him, bro. Come back, come back, come back. Come back. Got both, got both. He's coming up. Shields up, shields up, shields up. Right There's down, no right point, down. like... If they have infinity gold, there's no point right now. I'm dead, I'm dead. Why are you? <gasps> Don't let her get the diamond armor. Retreat, retreat, retreat to mushroom. Don't let her get the diamond armor. Be on me, happy on me. Ah, dude. I'm about to die, I'm dead. We need to get out, Anakin. Yeah, we gotta go. Anakin, Knight just fucking leave. Not worth anymore. It's not worth it. I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Anakin, just fucking leave. Not worth it anymore. It's not worth it. I'm dead. Prizable and Happy would successfully eliminate quite a few members of the Mushroom Commune on this island, and as a result, would get a lot of their equipment and supplies. However, there were more members of the Mushroom Commune that were still alive, which meant that there was still more work to be done. Knight Knight would flee back to base, attempting to warn everyone about the pirate duo that was fast approaching. But it was too late. No! Oh, just take cover, dude. We can't fight this. Guys, just retreat. Get out, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. It's just not worth it. You're just retreat, retreat. We're all getting picked off. Man, abandoned ship. Get in, Rem. <laughs> Please, third. Oh. No! He was in my pool! After the carnage, literally only three members of the Mushroom Commune survived out of the total of 13 members. The three that did survive were barely able to escape with the help of Amario, a member of the Ocean Cartel who just happened to be there while seeking to trade goods. But despite these two's glorious victory, the job was not done as those that have wronged them were still breathing and they would have their revenge no matter who stood in front of them. The survivors of the Mushroom Commune would soon reach the Ocean Cartel where the Mushroom Commune begged them to help deal with the pirate threat. And of course, the Mushroom Commune were able to convince the Ocean Cartel as once again, this civilization would also underestimate the abilities of both Prizable and Happy and believe that this would be an easy victory. Unfortunately, the Ocean Cartel would not have to pay dearly for this poor assumption. The pirates duo would quickly set sail off to the Ocean Cartel's home base to continue their quest for revenge. Upon reaching the base for some unknown reason, the Ocean Cartel and the Mushroom Commune just sat there. Even though they had far more numbers, they waited. This evident lack of communication, teamwork, or any competence for that matter. First of all, enemy. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. They killed like half the server. Would be a strong benefit for this pirate duo. After Prizable and Happy freshened themselves up, they decided to go in. The battle itself consisted of both Happy and Prizable against 16 Ocean Cartel members plus the three surviving Mushroom Kami members. A near 2 to 20 odds. Over there, over there, by, by Geek's farm. Oh my god, I'm just gonna like you're alone, you're, not, you're alone. Hold on, get back. I thought Hold there was on. one, I thought there was one. He said don't follow them. No one dropped down. No one. Give Monarch's OP bow now. Yep. Oh, yep. Okay, guys, guys, you're dropping. Everyone ready? Okay. Guys, okay. jump. He's going down, he's going down. Don't follow, don't follow, don't follow. Don't follow. Don't he gets five freedom, don't follow. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Hey, we need people. I'm dead. Okay. Okay, guys, help, 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 help. Oh my god, land. guys, help. Keep him on land. Just run. Keep him on I'm land. dead, on land. I'm dead. Good fight. Oh, I'm dead. Oh! After the carnage, Prizable and Happy successfully eliminated 17 players out of the 20 players in this battle, 
If you haven't been keeping track, only one member of the Mushroom Commune remained out of the original 13, and only two members of the Ocean Cartel remained out of the original 16. However, the last survivor of the Mushroom Commune was still at large, and despite the path of destruction that Prizable and Happy have paved thus far, their revenge would not rest until the entire Mushroom Commune was annihilated. As such, Prizable and Happy would scour the high seas to look for him. However, this journey would lead them right to the doorsteps of the Trade Federation. Despite the Trade Federation declaring neutrality days prior, Prizable and Happy, blinded by their desire for revenge, believed that the Trade Federation was perhaps protecting the last member of the Mushroom Commune. As such, would quickly and without warning also attack the Trade Federation. Oh my god, Prizable's here! He's killed me! He's killed me! I'm, I'm, I'm dead. Prizable's what? here. He, he killed me. Prizable's here. Ow. He killed Wait, me. Wait, he I'm just done. appeared out of nowhere. I'm he dead. Came. I, I'm popping my E-gap and I'm just running. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to leave the island. With this sudden ambush, the Trade Federation was completely caught off guard and thus quickly fled in all directions, leaving all of their valuable goods behind. In the aftermath, three members out of the nine members of the Trade Federation were eliminated. At this point, the pirate duo had now successfully toppled three civilizations with their own two hands, and by a stroke of good fortune for them, the last member of the Mushroom Kami would drown somewhere in this water wasteland. After Prizable's and Happy Revenge Journey, the total death tally was 32 players including those that were just at the wrong place at the wrong time. That's right, these two players, in their pursuit of revenge, successfully took the lives of 32 players. However, this isn't quite where this ends, as while the collapse of all these civilizations was an incredible historical event, there were of course survivors of this carnage, and in a twist of poetic irony, the hatred and anger that started all of this destruction would come back around. With the elimination of more than half of the populace in this world, the survivors of this destruction would naturally decide to band together. Fueled by anger derived from everything they have lost, they sought to put an end to, in their eyes, this pirate's tyranny. As one should remember, everyone is the hero of their own story, and here, in the eyes of the survivors, Prizable and Happy were the ones who started all this death and destruction. And most notably, the one who wanted to seek vengeance and revenge the most was Anime, the leader of the Trade Federation. This glorious world has a stain on it. That stain is obviously Happy ZZ and Prizable. And they have been butchering innocent civilians for too long. You must put an end to this. Moreover, remember the flock civilization from earlier? Well, thanks to their civilization being based deep underground, they had little to no interaction with the surface world thus having no involvement in the bloodbath above. However, this came at a cost, as living in the caves deep in the ground made them highly susceptible to hostile mobs, especially creepers, which were the main cause of death for them, including Duck, who was the original leader. However, Step Clep, the new leader of the flock, heard Anima's cries for help and as such, agreed to give valuable minerals like diamonds. In return for their service, they could have any island they wanted as their new home. As such, a new United Nations style alliance called the Ocean Alliance was born, whose sole purpose was to destroy, risable, and happy. However, soon after this alliance was made, Step Clep died. As a result, many members of the flock would give up on the alliance completely and merely try to save their own skin by digging deep into the earth, never to be seen again. The flock had just lost their wings. Moreover, the last two survivors of the Ocean Cartel, Omario and Flaming JP, would also defer their membership in the Alliance, as they still held immense grief and PTSD from watching all of their friends and family die before their very eyes. With heavy hearts, they would simply rest their weary bones at a memorial that they built in honor of the people they lost. As a result of all of this, only very few members of the Alliance would actually work together to try and put an end to this carnage. On the other hand, looking from the pirates' point of view, their revenge was satisfied as all of the members of the Mushroom Commune were now dead 
However, they knew that in the eyes of the civilized world, they were savages, and knew that, for them at least, the rest of the world would not give them peace. As such, the plan was simple. Attack now and eliminate all those in front of them. Evidently, this would not be an easy task, as while well the day before, the civilizations were underprepared, careless, and ignorant. Those that survived the carnage were stronger than ever, united by loss, led by a stronger leader, and truly ready to extinguish this pirate's threat once and for all. The alliance led by anime would try to assemble the remaining survivors on this island, where, through careful craftsmanship and engineering, would rig the place to explode once the pirate's threat appeared. The trap was simple, lead them through this front door, walk over the pressure plate and or pull the trigger, and boom goes the dynamite. However, to minimize the possibility of hurting a lot more than just the intended target, the remaining alliance members would hide in the shadows, waiting to clean up if the trap didn't go completely as planned. Therefore, with the trap set and the alliance members as geared as possible, the alliance was ready to go for the final encounter. Simultaneously, by a stroke of good fortune for the alliance, one of the pirates, Happy, would have quite the anticlimactic death in a cave. As such, only one pirate lived. Despite the numerical disadvantage, just looking back at the prior battles with him, it is reasonable to say that this may not be as one-sided as one might think. Risable, scouring the high seas like a great white shark, would soon stumble upon Anime's little house, thus initiating the final battle between Prizable and the Ocean Alliance. You know, he's here, he's here, he's here. Uh, uh, I see him, so I'm shooting at him. Fight, do a <sighs> attack here. If you kill him along with yourself, um, we'll Die. give you a very, very fancy grave. <laughs> oh, he has TNT minecart on top, he's gonna drop it. No, 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 if you just run into the TNT minecart, it will explode, and if he's right next to it, you will both die, but he will die. Got it. I got it. I took it out. Do I head TT up? TT down. Prizable, despite craving for blood, was hesitant on jumping right onto anime, as Prizable was more than aware of the evidently missing members of the Alliance. As such, Prizable would aim to attack from afar, utilizing his deadly loyal trident to cause massive damage to anime. This would go on for quite some time, but a simple block dropping would trigger the beginning of the- <laughs> Due to the wooden pressure plate that was placed moments before, it was easily susceptible to being triggered by a dropped item. As such, in the chaos of the duel, a block would accidentally trigger the pressure plate, thus taking the life of not prizable, but anime. With the death of the leader and the clearly alive prizable, the rest of the alliance would jump out to chase him down. The chase lasted days and nights, and despite the 6 to 1 odds, Prizable would put up a fair fight, keeping the members of the Alliance on their toes and at bay. However, despite his battle-hardened experience and the countless souls he has claimed in the name of revenge, in the end, the final death of this story would be his. Unlike the prior civilizations who so easily crumbled, this Ocean Alliance, similar to the beginning of Prizable's and Happy's story, was fueled by anger and the desire for revenge and vengeance for the countless lives that they have lost. In the end, this was enough to overcome Prizable, marking the end of his story, a man driven by revenge meeting his end by the Blade of Revenge as well. With the threat of Prizable and Happy officially over, the remaining members of the Alliance would declare peace in our time. To mark this victory, they would choose to head their way to the towering archipelago, where they would pay their final respects to all those that had died. With the dead honored and peace finally being achieved, this would mark the end of this episode. Despite the ending of this player-driven story, there are still many more to come. If you want to hear more, make sure you like and subscribe, and also comment what your favorite moment slash what you found interesting in this episode. I look forward to reading and responding to them. Also, if you want access to bonus content and help directly support cool events like this, consider donating to my Patreon. Not only will you be getting cool perks and additional content like bonus scenes, discord perks, and more, you'll be directly contributing to things like the server that hosts these events. Even a dollar can help a lot. But anyways, thanks for watching, and if you want a chance to take a part in epic events such as this and much more, click on the discord link in the description. Thank you for watching. See ya!